Amen. Good to be in the Lord's house this Sunday evening. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Then we'll get right into the service tonight. As we pray tonight, let's do remember each one of our preachers out of the church. Pray that the Lord will give them a good, good service tonight. Do remember Brother Scotty there at Pilot View Baptist Church. Brother Jeff as he's on the road with Rock of Ages. Brother Brock and our church plant there in Salem, Massachusetts. True gospel. Let's do remember them tonight. Brother Granville up at Mountaintop. Brother Chris over at Shield of Faith. Brother Williams up at Westside. Then Brother Jonathan over at Shine and Light. Pray that the Lord would help there. And then Dad is preaching at Old Time Baptist Church down around King tonight. So do remember him and uh, pray that the Lord would help him. Brother Ryan was with Brother Jonathan this morning. Time good service up there. Amen. Then Brother Josh was at Willis Gap. Had one saved up there this morning. Isn't Amen. that right? So thank the Lord for that. And um, I said he wasn't going to be here tonight. And I came in and he was sitting there. So he made me a liar to the whole church. But anyway. Anyway, um, he wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but he is anyway. Um, so do remember them. And um, after tonight, he'll be gone for at least six weeks. And uh, may even be longer than that. So do remember them. Pray for them. And uh, pray that the Lord would help there and meet those needs. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Brother Craig Golden. Pray that the Lord would give him a kidney. Uh, do remember Brother Peyton. He'll start his treatments tomorrow. And um, do pray for him. Pray that the Lord's will will be done there and um, uh, pray that God will touch him. Amen. I, I I don't know how he feels right now and I don't know what he's going through um, at 25 years old facing treatments tomorrow for cancer but I know God's able to help him. Amen. Amen. Let's pray that God meet that need. Remember that. Do remember Miss Tammy and her battle with cancer and this, then Miss Regina's dad and nephew. Let's do remember that and pray for them. Amen. Let's pray that God helps us tonight in the service. We sure need to hear from him. Amen. Let's pray that his will and way would be done tonight. That he would meet with us in a mighty, mighty way. Amen. Brother Josh, good to see you tonight, buddy. How about open this up in prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, I rejoice for that you give me another opportunity to be in your house, God. I pray, Heavenly Father, for all the preachers out of the church that will stand tonight. Give them fruits for the labor. God, Lord, may many souls be saved. I pray, God, you be with us in our service here to make some graves. We with our choirs the same, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, for our men of God. I want you to give him liberty. May the power of God rest upon him as he preaches to our hearts tonight. I pray, God, Lord, that you help these that sick physically. Lord, the ones that's facing treatments and the ones that's, Lord, got battles Lord, physically. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that Lord, you would come because only you can. Give them strength for their journey. Lord, we pray for the family of them as well, Lord, as they try to be an encouragement and a help for them. God, give them strength. Lord, we'll give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, you can be seated. Worship with the choir as they sing tonight.
Others, the choir comes down. Appreciate that good singing by the choir, amen. And uh, that will be a good day when we see the Lord, amen. Let me make just one or two or three or four or five or twelve quick announcements, then we'll get right into the service. Um, don't forget, if you're interested in being in the Christmas play, please make sure you sign up tonight. Missy Gay will be taking that up tonight, that list, and begin to uh, uh, work on who will be where. So do remember that. Um, then also, don't forget, tonight's the last night for the money and diaper shower for Brother Tim and Miss Amy and uh, you can put that on the table right back here. Um, also trunk or treat. We still need some help with trunk or treat so if you're willing to help us out with that, make sure you see Brother Heath after service tonight and he can help you with that. Um, if you haven't already downloaded the church app, make sure you do that and then register and uh, then if you've downloaded it recently you should be verified now and your new password are you ready for this? Your new password will be capital A and then uh, the rest is lowercase GBC 1985 exclamation point and uh, that'll give you access into everything else in that app all right so if you've got any questions about that you can see Miss Stephanie she'll help you out with that and uh, make sure you get that download let me say this also I know we've got several new families um, that's been coming we've been trying to stay up to date on this um, but if you're not getting the call of malls and you want to receive the call of malls, um, if you'll give Miss Stephanie your number on that also, she'll make sure that she gets you added to that also. And uh, for the time being, we're going to continue to use both. I know our app's shooting out notifications now, um, but for the time being, we're going to continue to use both of those. Um, and in days to come, we may switch over to just the app. We'll just wait and see. Um, but do remember that. And if you've got any questions about either one of those, you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, Miss Stephanie, and uh, she can help you out with that. Um, and then um, don't forget the the wedding on Saturday. Amen. Uh, Brother Aaron and Miss Bethany request the pleasure of your company at the celebration of their union Saturday, the 19th of October 2019 at 1 o'clock in the afternoon here at the church. So do remember that. And then there'll be a reception to follow that after service, after service, after the wedding. Well, it will be a service and um, you don't want to miss that and you say well why is it going to be a service? I like what they're doing at it. I'm doing the biggest part of the wedding uh, um, as far as the vows and all of that but then um, before it's all said and done they want the gospel given at the wedding and um, daddy is going to give a gospel presentation at the wedding and uh, I told daddy I said now if I have to I will get the cowbell out on you um, at that wedding but anyway he's going to give the 
a presentation of the gospel. And uh, man, what a great idea. Amen. So do remember that and uh, looking forward to that on Saturday and excited to see what the Lord's going to do with them in days to come. Amen. Already faithful to the church. Both of them teach Sunday school. Um, but I'm excited to see what God's going to do with them in days to come. So do remember that. Then don't forget on Wednesday night, Discovery Bible Club. Amen. Looking forward to a good time Wednesday night at that. And uh, Brother Heath said that um, on Wednesday night, as long as it's not raining, the snack and everything will be outside. And the reason we're doing that is to give Brother Aaron and Miss Bethany more time in the fellowship hall, trying to get everything ready for their wedding coming up. And then also we had those floors stripped and waxed on yesterday. So we're trying to keep it looking good um, for the wedding on Saturday. So do remember that. Um, so if it's a little bit cool, your kids may want to put on a long sleeve shirt um, on Wednesday night and uh, they'll have a good time. I'm excited about that. Looking forward to that. Amen. Uh, let me say this, then we'll get uh, our offering tonight and the special song. I really appreciate everybody being faithful this week to revival. Amen. And um, over the last little bit, we've kindly changed revivals up a little bit. We do Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night. Just move our Wednesday night back to Tuesday night. And uh, I'm going to tell you, man, since we've done that, we have saw a greater uh, crowd during our revivals. And uh, uh, usually if we go through Wednesday night, Wednesday night will stay strong, but then Thursday night and Friday night, it's like everybody forgets about it. And uh, they forget that we have church on Thursday night and Friday night. Um, so we started having more meetings and just having them for two nights. And um, everybody seems to really like that. And uh, man, I heard so much positive from this past meeting. I had several people come up to me and say this right here, Preacher, I probably got more help at this meeting than any meeting that we've ever had at Amazing Grace. And uh, man, Brother Bradley Boone just just absolutely preached the house down. Did he not? All three nights on Jacob. If you wasn't here, I know Brother Josh was preaching out, um, but if you wasn't here, I really encourage you to go back and to listen to, and start on Sunday night. Listen to Sunday night first, then Monday night, and then Tuesday night because he builds all week going into that. And um, they're on our podcast. I guess all three of them's on the podcast now, are they? Um, they're on our podcast, so you don't have to listen to another singer or anything on the podcast, it goes straight into the preaching and um, um, you'll enjoy it. If you was here, go back and listen to all three of them because I promise you, you didn't get it all while he was preaching. Amen. And uh, I'm going to tell you what. I guess everybody has that that moment in a meeting that um, something really just rings their bell. Whenever Jacob um, walked up to bless the children, in which it was Brother Bradley doing it, and Brother Bradley done that right there and talked about and I had read that before, but I never really studied it out. And how that he was not willing to let go of that bitterness that he had in his life, my soul. I don't know about anybody else, man, but that was phenomenal. I'm telling you, it was awesome. And um, do go back and listen to that, and uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy them. Amen. So do remember that. Make sure you're faithful on Wednesday night, and we'll have a good, good time in the Lord's house. And again, thank you so much, man, every night. The choir was packed out. The church was full. We had a few visitors, for, but for the most part, it was our church. And I really do appreciate you being faithful during the revival. Amen. Ushers, come on tonight. Let's get our Sunday night missions off, and you make sure you give good tonight as the Lord has blessed you this week. And uh, let's help keep the missionaries on the field. Amen. Girls, y'all come on. Get ready to sing for us in the offering tonight. I always enjoy hearing these young ladies sing. They always do a great, great job. And I'm excited about hearing them sing tonight. Brother Jonathan, good to have you tonight. How about um, praying over the offering, if you will, preacher? man worship with these girls as they sing. When I was lost in my sins, I remember well that night when the Lord saved my soul.
soul from hell and I thank God every day for his grace on me cause I am washed I'm redeemed and I've been set free and I thank the Lord for the glorious night when the blessed Holy Ghost led me to the light there at the altar as I prayed Jesus washed all my sins away and oh how sweet is the sound I once was lost but now I found God's amazing grace still amazes me there have been times I walked away from the Lord my sins grew many and my heart grew cold fellowship was broken and I fell so all alone but it didn't matter how far I'd gone God was still faithful when I came back home My sins were forgiven and His grace to me was shown I stand here before you tonight Rejoicing everything's alright In my heart I know that I am saved And oh how I long to do God's will I found that I fell and still, but I'm glad His grace never will. And I thank the Lord for the glorious night when the blessed Holy Ghost led me to the light there at the altar as I prayed. Jesus washed all my sins away, and oh how sweet is the sound. I once was lost, but now I found God's amazing grace still amazes me. Thank the Lord for the glorious night when the blessed Holy Ghost led me to the light there at the altar as I prayed. Jesus washed all my sins away and oh how sweet is the sound. I once was lost but now I found God's amazing grace still amazes me. Amen. God's amazing grace does still amaze me. Amen. And uh, thank the Lord for that good singing. And um, hey, they've already got a bus. <laughs> Might as well go on the road singing for Jesus, at not he? Amen. Theirs is not just any bus. According to the back of it, it's the cool bus. <laughs> Amen. And I uh, appreciate that good singing tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter number 32. And uh, I'm going to try to preach a little bit here out of Deuteronomy 32 tonight. And uh, you pray for us. I appreciate the Lord helping us this morning. I felt like I really struggled um, uh, with my voice. But um, you pray for us tonight that the Lord would help us and uh, meet our need. I had Brother Ryan on standby and um, was just going to let him preach tonight. Tonight, but I really felt like I needed to preach tonight, so I want to be obedient to the Lord, amen, and um, see what he would have for us. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and I want to look at a verse out of here. And uh, we'll see what he'll give us, amen. Deuteronomy 32, and Brother Rodney, if you'll bump me up just a little bit in the monitors, just, just right before it squeals, it'll help me tonight. And um, um, I'll try not to throw my voice out. Deuteronomy 32, and uh, I was telling, um, uh, it may have been Brother Ryan I was talking to today, or Brother David Edwards one. Uh, it may have been Brother David, I can't remember, somebody I was talking to today, and I said, you know, I read my text this morning, even told the church, and I'm not going to preach hard because I just can't. Um, uh, these allergies has got me messed up and I just can't. And uh, by the time I was said and done, I told Brother David, I, I'm almost positive it was Brother David. Brother David said, well, how'd that work out for you? And uh, I said, well, it didn't. But anyway, uh, I'm really going to try not to scream and holler tonight, all right? I, I, I was reading this week, and uh, I love to read, and many of you know that. The older I get, the more I read, um, and, and um, uh, I, I love to read, not just, I love to read things about the Bible, but also things about leadership and things of that nature, and um, I just enjoy reading anymore. But anyway, I was reading this week, and uh, I read across something that 
And um, it was talking about the good old days. And uh, Brother Robert, whenever I read that, I began thinking about it. And I shared some of it with Brother Matt this morning. I, I want to give you a simple thought tonight. 99.999% of the time, I read a verse or I read a passage of Scripture. And you know this, I stay right in that passage of Scripture and really preach more expository straight line, uh, verse by verse, line upon line, precept upon precept. But I, I want to give you a little topical thought tonight and uh, just pull a, a, a phrase out of a verse. And I hardly ever do this, um, but I want to do this tonight. And uh, just something that, that really stirred my soul this week as I read it and as I looked at it. And um, I, I want to give you a little thought. Let's stand in honor and ever to the reading of God's Word. Deuteronomy chapter 32 Look with me in verse number 7. The Bible said this in Deuteronomy 32 verse number 7. Remember the days of old. Uh, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders and they will tell thee. And I just want to pull a phrase out of the beginning of this verse. Remember the days of old. And I want to talk to you about this thought for just a little while and I, I remember when. I remember when. And you say, you remember when what? Well, just stay with me a minute and I'll tell you. Father, I love you tonight and I, I really do appreciate you, Lord, for allowing me to serve you. Thank you, God, for calling me to preach. Thank you, God, for putting me in the ministry. Thank you, God, for allowing me to serve you and to live for you, God. I pray tonight that you'd help us as we look at these very simple things. And God, may we learn from them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated tonight. I'm also reminded of a verse in Jeremiah that says this, Seek ye out the old paths uh, and walk therein, for there is the good way. And then it goes on to say this, And therein ye shall find rest. He said ye shall find rest. Where do you find rest at? You find rest in the old paths according to the Bible. As I began to think about that and I, I began to think about this verse, remember the days of old, uh, I began to think about what we consider the quote unquote good old days. Here's what Bob Darty said, a great man of God that's passed on now, but here's what he said. He said, if you're over 55 years old, uh, you'll remember all of these things. He goes on to say this, I remember when uh, there was no television. What about that? How many, now, I might get in trouble. How many remembers a day when there was no television? Does anybody remember that? Four, five. Was you raising your hand or spitting your gum out? Five remembers the day. Jason said that he remembers the day when that, that was the day that you got in trouble and Grandma grounded you. He said, I remember when there was no television. A time before frozen food, plastics, pantyhose, dishwashers, clothes dryers, electric blankets, air condition, and many more modern conveniences. He said, I remember when a man and a woman got married and then they lived together. A time before house husbands, gay rights, and computer datings. I remember when bunnies were rabbits. A time before daycare centers, group therapy, and nursing homes. I remember grass was mowed, not smoked. A time before FM radio, tape decks, artificial hearts, and electronic typewriters. I remember when Coke was a soft drink and pot was something that you cooked in. A time before the sex changed, designer jeans, and the ballpoint pen. I remember when aides were helpers in the principal's office down at the schoolhouses and a time before there was a such thing as a credit card. And he goes on to say, I remember when we lived in the good old days. I began to think about that. I don't remember a time before ballpoint pens, but I do remember a time before cell phones. 
I do remember that. I've said this many times. I remember one of the very first cell phones uh, that daddy ever had was a bag phone. Uh, then I remember the very first person down at the great Boonville Christian Academy. And uh, I didn't know this. Where Brother Danny and Miss Adrian back there. I, I just don't know that we can let them in anymore because they both went to White Plains. Can you believe that, Brother Matt? I just don't know about that. I was telling them we was talking to Fourth Service. But anyway, I remember Miss Tina Michael Hutchins walking into high school and he had a bag fall. We thought, man, this is the coolest thing. And he didn't have but a hundred minutes for the month. <laughs> Y'all remember that? I remember when the pager came out. And you wore that pager around, Brother Scotty. And they would page you. And then you found a pay fall. We was walking down the street in Savannah not long ago and walked past a phone booth and my girl said, what is that? And I said, that's what you used to go in, put a quarter in it and made a phone call. And if they really needed you, Brother Ryan, they put 911 at the end of the page that they sent you. Does anybody else remember that? What we consider sometimes... The good old days. He goes on to say this as you grow older. What a joy it is to reminisce about the good old days. These are some things from the good old days that I would never want or there is some things about the good old days that I would never want to bring back. And I say amen to that. Thank God for hot water in the house today. Thank God for electricity and air condition and, and all the modern day conveniences. But can I say this to you tonight? As we look back on the good old days, there is some great memories in the quote unquote good old days as we look back at the days of BCA and days gone by. That's where Miss Tina and Brother Matt and myself went to school at. We look back on those things and man, I, I, I tell you, man, the worst thing that really happened around there, we all got in trouble for cheating one time and I told Tina to quit looking off my paper or she was going to get us in trouble and she just wasn't. <laughs> Listen, she may have told me to quit looking on her paper but I'm just being honest with you. We went to school, you know, Brother Jonathan, when we went to school, we didn't worry about some major shooting happening down at the schoolhouse. Matter of fact, when I went to school, we never had a lockdown drill. Had a fire drill. Yeah. Had a fire drill, but we never had a lockdown drill. We never worried about that. This is the honest truth. Any given winter day at the great BCA, you'd see a couple four-wheel drive trucks with shotguns hanging in the back glass of them because we was going hunting when we got out of school. We would show each other our guns in the parking lot of the schoolhouse. As we think back on all of that, I sure wish we could go back to some of those days. I remember when. So as I read this verse, remember the days of old. Here's some things that I come up with. Can I share them with you tonight? Number one, I remember when Sundays was church. Now, it's kind of like I said this morning. If you'll help me, it'll help me get done a whole lot faster tonight. But I remember when Sundays was church. Listen to what the Bible said in Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 7. Now, topical preaching don't bother me as long as they got Bible to back it up. Listen to what he said. And when the first day of the week, when the, and, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech, listen to this, until midnight. You know, I have nothing to worry about tonight because I don't have that much in me, okay? But I remember a day when Sunday was for church. Sunday was to go to church. Can I just say this to you tonight? My children has never woke up on a Sunday morning and walked into my bedroom and said, Dad, are we going to the house of God today? Dad, are we going? It was, it's never been an option down at the Barker household. And it was never an option in the Barker household that I grew up in. We went to church on Sundays. I remember when Sundays was for church. I remember that. 
that time. Can I say this to you? I remember when Sundays was not a day just to sit around and relax. It was a day to go to the house of God. I remember when Sundays wasn't a lake day. It was a day to go to the house of God. I remember when Sundays uh, was not a day to play ball. It was a day to go uh, to the house of God. And can I say this to you? We would be a whole lot better off if we would get back to the good old days uh, of making church Sunday uh, a church day. It was a day to go to the house of God. I honestly, honestly, I remember a day when it was hard to find a store open on a Sunday. That's, and I'm not an old man. I'm just 41 years old. But I remember my dad and my mom taking a vehicle on Saturday and filling it up with gas. And here's what he would say. Something may happen to one of our church members uh, and we may need to go to the hospital tomorrow. We better make sure we've got gas to get there. Can I just say this? I was probably 17 or 18 years old before I eat out the first time on a Sunday. You know, let me tell you what our Sundays consisted of. We got up, we went to church, we come home and had a family meal around the table. And can I just say this? We're getting away from that. We're getting, we are so busy in our society. Let me tell you one of our favorite times of the whole day. It's in the evenings when we come in and we sit down at the supper table and the wives cook something good for supper and we sit around the table as a, somebody say amen, as a family and eat. That's what we done on Sunday. We done that every day of the week where I grew up and we do that now every day of the week. But can I say this? On Sundays, we had Sunday lunch and mom and dad and every once in a while, Pa and Ma Hatfield would invite us over and we'd go eat pinos and cornbread and mashed taters and fried chicken and pound cake and sat on the front porch until time to go back to church on Sunday night. And we went back to the house of God on Sunday night. And when it was over, we went home and reminisce the day of how good God was. I remember a time when Sundays was a church day. When it was a church day. Now I want you to understand something. I completely understand that some of you sitting in this room has to work on Sundays. Your job requires you to. Brother Aaron has to work every third Sunday. Matter of fact, we was talking for service and Miss Adrian has to work every other Sunday. There's sometimes that Brother Ryan gets called in and has to work on Sundays. I completely understand that. I completely understand that. But just to take a little overtime to make a little extra money on a Sunday is not right. It's not right. It's a day to go to the house of God. It's a day to go to the house of God. I remember when Sunday was church. We went to church on Sunday. Now, time out. Let me just stop for a second. Every person in this room ought to be hollering amen at me right now. Because you're in church. You're in church. There's no need to die. You're here. But I remember that. I remember when Sunday was the Lord's day. It wasn't our day. It was the Lord's day. And we set it aside to go to the house of God. What did he say? He said, remember the days of old. Number one, I remember when Sunday was church. Number two, I remember when salvation was a change. When somebody got saved, their life was changed. Amen. What did he say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I remember a time when an individual got saved by the grace of God and their life was different. Amen. You say, well, I got saved. Nothing ever changed. Well, that don't line up with the Bible. Don't line up with the Bible. I remember when salvation, I remember when salvation was a change. I remember when Daddy would pray for them old bootleggers. We'd watch them get saved by the grace of God. 
And their life would change, Brother Heath. Their life would be different. In today's society, today, an individual can say they get saved. They continue living the life that they've always lived. Nothing ever changes about them. And they think they're going to heaven. That don't line up with the Word of God. Yeah. Salvation will change your life. If you don't believe me, talk to Brother Jerry and see. It will change you. You will not be the same person. Hey, the things you used to do, you'll not do the way you used to act. You'll not act. Why? Because the God of all glory has moved into your soul and changed your life. I remember a day when salvation was a change. I read this by Bob Darty also. Here's what he said. I was barred from the city of Dallas, Georgia for six months. But after I got saved, the mayor and chief of police came to visit me after I got saved. I had given them a lot of trouble. Evidently, if he was banned for six months, they said, if we can ever help you in any way, just let us know. The law said I could not preach on the streets in Dallas. But the mayor and the chief said I could anytime I wanted to. If anyone said anything about it, to tell them to come see them. So I preached on the streets in Dallas every Saturday. And the very first church that I ever pastored was in Dallas, Georgia. He said the reason I was able to do that is because God made such a change in my life that the mayor mayor of the city seen it and said you can do anything you want to. That's what I'm talking about. A change takes place when an individual gets saved. I remember when Sundays was church. I remember that. And can I just say this and don't nobody get mad at me and don't nobody throw nothing at me. I, I'm not calling nobody. I'm just preaching tonight. Whenever Madeline, we've been looking for her a little job and, and nothing's worked out yet, here's the reason why. She's not going to work when we're having church. She's not going to work. I talked, and I'm, I, don't, I know this goes out everywhere, but I talked to the owner of Chick-fil-A, and I said, she can't work on Wednesday. He said, well, we require them to work one Wednesday a month. I said, you're lost because she's a good worker and she's not coming to work here. Well, that just got quiet. I need this ball again. Preach a little while. You say, well, we got to teach them responsibility. You're exactly right. But she's 16 years old. I can take care of her a little while longer. I'm just not shoving them out to the world and letting them miss the house of God. Sundays was church. Salvation was a change. But can I say this, number three? I remember a time when the saints were concerned. They was concerned. I remember a time when they was concerned. This is what the Bible said in Mark chapter number 2. And they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You want me to tell you the reason that this man right here that was sick of the palsy got saved by the grace of God and got to where Jesus was at because somebody got concerned about him. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. When was the last time you shed a tear over somebody going to hell? Right. Don't you think about that a minute. And if you have to think very long about that, we in a mess. Come on now, somebody help me. We in a mess. We in a mess. I remember a time when saints was concerned. I remember when Christians wept over sinners. Matter of fact, some of y'all sitting in this room tonight that say by the grace of God, I can remember a time when I watch people weep and pray for God to save you. I'm going to ask you something. Why are we not doing that anymore? If we're not, I'm not saying you're not. I don't know your personal prayer life. But if we're not... 
People still going to hell. People still dying every second of every day. Hell still enlarging herself daily. We've come to a place today where we don't we don't want to offend nobody. Well, preacher, if I tell them that they're going to hell if they're not saved, it may offend them. Can I just say so? I'm glad that there were some old time leather lung preachers and some little godly Sunday school teaching ladies that was not worried about offending us but told us that hell was hot and heaven was sweet and wept over us and prayed over us and that's the reason I'm here today. I remember a time when saint was concerned. I'll ask you a question. As you sit here tonight, in your mind, you can think back over the past year of somebody that used to sit on these pews that's not sitting here any longer. Now, I'm ask you this question. How long has it been since you contacted them and told them you missed them at church? Well, preacher, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Well, time out. Let me run one rabbit. That's not what I'm supposed to do. According to the Word of God, what I'm supposed to do is read and pray and prepare and preach the Word of God. That's what I'm supposed to do. The deacons are supposed to do all the other stuff. Well, amen. That's exactly right. I'll take you through the Bible and show it to you. Now it does not bother me to do that and I'm glad that any of our deacons at any time I can call them and they'll take care of things for me. But it's all of our responsibility to be concerned. To be concerned. It should concern you that people no longer sit on the church pew. Sunday school teacher, it should concern you if you've got somebody that misses a Sunday, you ought to reach out to them. Especially, hey look, especially if over the past eight weeks they've been gone more than they've been here. But preacher, they're this person. I don't care who they are. It does not matter. <coughs> it don't matter. Hey, can I tell you something? I bet, I bet if I wasn't here for two or three weeks, I'd be reached out to. I bet somebody would say, anybody heard anything? I, matter of fact, I bet Wednesday night, come about 7.05, if me or none of my family was here, somebody would probably be calling me Say, but, 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 but preacher, where are you at? Why do we hold the preacher to a higher level than we do anybody else? Hey Amen. When saints were concerned, may God break our heart again, church. Let me show you another one, number four. Number four, I remember a time. I've got several of these, okay? I remember a time, number four tonight, I remember a time not only when Sunday was for church and salvation was a change and saints was concerned. I remember a time when sin was condemned. I remember a time when sin was condemned. I remember a time when wrong was wrong and right was right and white was white and black was black. Today we are so scared to death. Well, somebody's going, let me just read you something. Luke chapter number three. Here's what John did and many other things. And his exhortation preached unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him um, for Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife, and for all the evils which he had done, had a jet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Why did he shut up John in prison? Here's the reason why. Because of his exhortation and preaching. When you study John out, you know what he done? He called sin by name. Matter of fact, there was sometimes he called names. 
That's the reason. He, everybody said, boy, I wish John come preach at our church. No, you don't. Everybody said, well, I, I want a preacher like Jesus. He's not just come in and turn the tables over. Amen. Right. Yeah, man. I remember a time when sin was condemned. And I'm all for loving the sinner. I'm all for loving the sinner. But I'm also all for hating the sin. What's right is right. And what's wrong is wrong. If it is contrary to the King James Bible, it is sin. It, amen. It is sin. I remember a time when preachers preached against taking another man's wife. I remember a time when preachers preached against young people being all over each other. Matter of fact, they're not going to be all over each other down in Amazing Grace because I'll say something to the parents and if the parents don't do nothing, I'll say something to the kids. You say, what if they get mad and leave? Well, they can get mad and leave. I don't mean that ugly. I'm just being real with you today, church. I remember a time when sin was condemned. Well, it's just an altered lifestyle. Why can't everybody accept it? Why couldn't they accept the lifestyle God gave them? Hello, Tokyo. Why couldn't they accept the lifestyle God God gave them that lifestyle. Why couldn't they accept that? You want me to tell you the reason they couldn't? Uh, because they're lost uh, and on the road to hell and they're looking for peace. Uh, they're looking for happiness. They're looking for joy in all the wrong places. But if they would just meet the Savior, He could change their life. Uh, he could save them from hell uh, and give them true joy that it's unspeakable and full of glory. I remember a time when sin was condemned. When it was condemned, we get we get labeled today if we stand for what's right. Well, honey, write the label in a permanent marker because I'm not changing. I'm trying to get done, but I'm not changing. I'm not stand, changing my stand on King James Bible. I'm not changing my stand on the Word of God. I'm not changing my stand on what's right and what's wrong. There are some convictions that we may differ on. But when it comes to backing it up with Scripture, I'm not changing it. I'm not changing it. Preachers to be the husband of one wife. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You say, well, Josh has got two wives. No, he don't. He's got one that's dead and in heaven. He fulfilled his vow. Let me just go ahead and clear that up real quick. He fulfilled his vow to her till death do us part and stood beside of her, walked away from a job, walked away from a church that was in the midst of revival, resigned every bit of it and sat beside of her bed until the day that she died. He's got one living wife and the other's in heaven. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody wants a Bible to fit their lifestyle and they want to twist the scriptures. Yeah, Amen. Preaching time tonight in Amazing Grace. You say, well, Brother Jonathan, Brother Jonathan, Brother Jonathan, nothing. It's still right when things is right. It's still right. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, and I change not. God has not changed. I remember a time when sin was condemned. When it was condemned, Brother Randy. When it was wrong. Today, today, I want you to hear me right here. Anybody is welcome to sit on the pews at Amazing Grace Baptist Church. Anybody. But if they're going to become a member, 
they're held to a different standard. And if they're going to hold a position, they're held to a different standard. You said, preacher, I want to be you so bad. Get faithful. Say, preacher, I want to do something for God. Preacher, I want to help in a Sunday school class. Preacher, I want to do this. Preacher, I want to do that. Get faithful. Yeah, man, Brother Jonathan, you're running well. Just preach on. I believe I will. Sin was condemned. It was condemned. It was condemned. Let me show you something else. I remember when a lot of y'all are going, I wish his voice would have went out and Ryan would have preached. I remember when Sunday was church. I remember when salvation was a change. I remember when saints were concerned. I remember when sin was condemned. But number five, and I'll end here. I remember when shouting was common. You hearing me? I remember when shouting was common. So preach, what are you talking about? Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, amen. Well, glory. I wish I had a throat. I'd really shout. I remember when that was common. I remember that. Listen to what the Bible said in Romans 15, 10, and 11. And again he saith, Rejoice, you Gentiles. That's us. We're those Gentile dogs. And again he saith, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. And loud him, all you people. You know what that means right there? I looked that up. You know what that means in the Greek and loud him? You know what that means? Here's what it means. Shout. Praise. Lift your voice up. You say, well, I just don't like your style of preaching. I've got scripture for it. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's what the Bible said. I got scripture for it. Well, I just don't like this. Or I, don't. I got scripture for it. Amen. Don't go to condemning everything. I got scripture for it. I got scripture for the furniture that's in our church. Amen. I take it a step further. In recent days... I've got scripture for the way I dress in the pulpit. That high priest in that Old Testament was different. His apparel was different. Now, you can get, this is my pulpit, so I'll say what I want to in my pulpit. You can get mad at me if you want to, but I get real concerned at everybody that just wants to be relaxed down at the house of God. Just come as you are and let's just be relaxed. No, no, no. It's not a place to be relaxed. It's a place to put our best on when we walk into the house of God. It's a place that we lift our hands and exalt the name of Christ for what he's done for us. Amen. I remember a time when shouting was coming. I understand there's sometimes people get off work, they come running. I understand all that. You understand what I'm saying. I remember a time when grannies and ladies carried a handkerchief to church. Yeah. Carried a handkerchief to church. Let me tell you the reason why. They was expecting to get in the glory. They was expecting to shed a tear. Nowadays, they run up to the altar grab a handful of Kleenexes because they didn't come prepared to get in the glory. Now don't get mad at me. Don't get, they didn't come prepared to cry. Tell you what you do when you go somewhere and you know you're probably going to cry. You take some Kleenexes with you. I remember them little grannies. Get to waving that little hanky. And you ever notice that it began to grow? And as it grew, they got louder. 
And usually when it got all the way, they was up. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember walking into Amazing Grace. I'm just going to preach to us a minute. But I remember times walking into Amazing Grace Baptist Church and you didn't know if somebody's going to grab a Christian flag and wave it and run out the front doors or if somebody was going to jump on a pew and holler yippee. You didn't know what was going to happen. Why? Because they're so excited to be down at the house of God. I remember a time when the ladies were singing in the choir and all of a sudden you'd have thought we was in the Mississippi Squirrel Revival. <laughs> Some they lifted up their voices and began to shout to God. I've said this many times and I'm right now dumb but I've said this it's just three minutes after seven. Okay? I've said this many times. There's three things that everybody needs to do in life. Three things. Number one, they need to get saved. Now, let me say that again, all right? Number one, they need to get saved. Let me try it one more time. Number one, they need to get saved. Number two, not only do they need to get saved, they need to completely surrender their life to God's will. Whatever it is God has for them to do. And number three, and bless God, if you've never done this, don't you say amen right now. They need to have an old time shouting fit. Now that means there's about four of y'all in here that done that. And a couple of y'all, I'm about to call counterfeits. <laughs> they need to have an old time shouting fit. You know what? We've been in services before and all of a sudden I can hear them. You know what I'll do? It's just in recent days. Happened at Island Ford. It happened at Temple the other night. You know what I'll do? That's scriptural. Oh, yes. I'll look around for Miss Linda. And I'll go, Miss Linda's starting to get a little bit in the glory. Where's she at? You want me to tell you the reason I want to know where she's at? Because I want in on it. Amen. Sometimes the choir will be singing. Y'all don't know this. Every once in a while the choir will be singing. I'll hear her back there. Woo! Woo! I'm waiting on her to turn loose. She preach what you say. I remember a time when shouting was common at church. I've watched my daddy run the backs of the pews before. We was at... Meadows Baptist Church in Winston one night and he run the backs of the pews on the wing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them old churches had a wing in them. Y'all know what I'm... He run the back of them, Brother Stan, and after service, I went over and looked at it. They weren't even bolted down. He run the back of them and turned around and run back across the front. Shouting just as hard as he could shout. Had a handkerchief waving it and a black back Schofield Bible preaching like a wild man and running across. Let me tell you what he was doing. He was magnifying God. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said much learning hath made him mad. Paul and Silas shouted at midnight and it was the first jailhouse rock. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember a time when the men would say this, I'm going to sit in the amen corner tonight. Anybody else ever heard that statement? I'm going to sit in the amen corner tonight. I can remember a time, Josh Jenkins, when we would load up to go to meeting and we would stand in the parking lot on the asphalt and do that right there before we'd go in. And you'd say, why would you do that? to scuff the bottoms of our dress shoes with all anticipation of the glory falling and running a lap around the church. I'm just being honest with you. I remember that. Let me tell you the reason people don't shout today. They don't go into church to shout. Let me tell you the reason Sunday night services are usually dead. Everybody all right. 
is because they take off Sunday afternoon and run all over the country. Go sit and wait three hours somewhere to eat. They go in there and they eat. They wait another hour on the food. They go home. They sit down for a second. And then, oh, man, I'm just give out. And they drag back into the house of God. If we would keep Sundays for church. Preach, Brother Jonathan. I believe I will. If we'll keep Sundays for church, we'll walk back in on Sunday nights, refreshed, ready to go to church. Hear me tonight when I preach this morning uh, on that lady uh, that was sitting there by the well in John chapter number four. That was a Samaritan lady. That was a harlot that had lived a life of sin. Uh, but God came to where she was at and found her and saved her, held his servant soul. Every one of us in this building ought to have raised our voices and said, thank God for the day that he came to where I was at and saved me from hell. I do have something to shout about. I do have something to praise God about. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm blood washed. Jesus is my father. I have something to shout about tonight. I have something to shout about. Look around. Look around. Look at what God has done in the past 13 years. Look at where God has brought us from. Look at what God has done in your home. If those two sitting right there can say amen tonight, then no one of us got an excuse. Yes, sir. Amen. None of us do. Both of them buried their spouse at an early age in the prime of their life. But God was looking after them and give them each other. And now God's put Brother Josh on the road all the time preaching all over the country and somebody getting saved this morning. I remember a day when he was in a little old single wide trailer with the floor falling in in it and his blue jeans was ripped when he walked into church and could care less about the things of God. Oh, but God passed by by his way and he got his life right with God and God called him to preach and now he's out sharing the gospel we do have something to praise God for tonight do you realize that do you realize that a lot of churches never send two or three preachers out of their church in, their, in the entire span of a church in every service, we call nine preachers' names out that's out of our church. And as we're calling them out, there's still five in our church. Amen. Amen. So, preach, what do you say? I remember a time when shouting was common. The, look up in here. They ought not have to be the right song sung. Amen. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm tired, but I still got a little preach in me. They ought not have to be the right song sung. Especially by the right group. Has nothing to do with the group. If you'll shout on it while one singing, then you won't on the other one. You're shouting for the group. Yeah, man. That's exactly right. Well, you know what? If my favorite preacher reads my favorite passage of Scripture, I may say amen. Well, you want me to tell you what my favorite passage of Scripture is? All 66 books. That's right. You want me to tell you who my favorite preacher is? That one that's plugged into the Holy Ghost of God. That's got the power of God on him and stands up with an anointing and preaches the Word of God. Oh, yeah. I remember a time when shouting was common. So, preacher, how do I shout? Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody worships different. And here's what a lot of people say. Come start playing something. I don't mean nothing, but come start playing something. Here's what a lot of people say. Well, preach, I just worship different than you do. Well, how do you worship? 
Hello? How do you worship then? How, I got scripture for lifting up my hand. I got scripture for clapping my hands. I got scripture for saying, yeah, man. Matter of fact, if you go around the throne of heaven today, you know what they're saying? Yeah, man. Praise God. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. I got scripture for saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. I just don't worship like that. Well, how do you worship? How do you worship then? Everybody all right? How do you worship? God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You say, well, I'm just not emotional. And you lie about other things too. You let little Johnny get the football or big Johnny get the football and run it across the lines and let's see how emotional you are. Let me kick you in the shin. Shave your face and cut it and let me put hand sanitizer all over it. They're right, Joshua Jenkins. And you'll get emotional. Let them take two car payments out on the same month. What are you doing? What was you thinking? It was an accident. Well, it better never happen again or I'll go to another bank. Don't invite them to Amazing Grace after that conversation, okay? <laughs> person in here is emotional. That, let's just be real. It's what we're made up of. is emotions. I'll wake up in the morning and my emotion will be stay in the confound bed. I promise. You say why? Because I'm going to go home and overdose on bed drill. That's why. But what do we do? We push past that. It's not about an emotion. It's about an experience. Worshiping is not about an emotion. It's about an experience. Josh, let me, I'll pick on Carla. I've picked on him enough. Carla, in her emotion, the day that we buried Brother Keith and she was sitting on the front row of Charity Hill Baptist Church in her flesh and in her emotion did not want to get a microphone and sing. But she realized how good God had been to her. And in the midst of an emotion of being questioning God and wondering why, she could still... She could still... <laughs> Yeah, I'm about to preach myself happy. She could still lift her voice up. Yeah, hallelujah. And sing about a God that was real to her in the midnight hours. It's not about an emotion, but it is about an experience that I had with God the night he saved me from hell. And because of that, I'll lift an unworthy hand. And I will say, the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's why. That's why. I remember when. I remember when. May God let us walk back down memory lane and get back to where we used to be at. Get back to church being church on Sunday. 
Get back to being concerned about people going to hell. Get back to the things. Can I just say it this way? That is the foundation of our faith. Sin still sin. Wrong still wrong. Right still right. And He's still worthy. No matter what we're facing. To say thank you Lord. For your blessings on me. I'll ask you this question in closing. How long has it been. Since you found your place in an altar. And just worshipped. Just said thank you. God I'm not asking you for nothing. I just say thank you for everything you have done. Father. So we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed tonight. And nobody looking around. God, you know the need of this service.